focus. These are just a selection of the many practice journals that I have kept over the years and there's various different bits of exciting things. There's a lot of photocopying of standards, lots of different exercises that I've found over the years. There are some handwritten notes but one of the most interesting things I found was this article on the Michael Brecker. There's a Facebook group called In Honor of Michael Brecker or something else like that. And this popped up a few days ago and it was an article about what's been put in by David Dempsey at William Patterson University in the United States. He has now got a living jazz archive and he's one of the ones is of Michael Brecker. And within this archive, there are over 800 pages of practice journals like this, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, there are hundreds of transcribed solos, lots and lots of chord changes, because Brecker was operating in a time when you weren't really photocopying a huge amount of things. A lot of it is handwritten by Brecker. There's stuff on counterpoint exercises, there's chord changes. Brecker kept stuff, I guess Mike might have been a bit of a kleptomaniac because he kept stuff all the way back from Indiana University in 1967, workbooks from that. There's over 250 hours of uh, unreleased live gig audio recordings and over 600 recordings of performance tapes. I wish, I can't wait at some point to get over to New Jersey, to the university, to William Patterson University and get a hold of some of this amazing archive. Because even with just this one sheet that I printed off from the archive, I hope that's okay to do that, um, I was able to construct a fantastic practice session and I thought I'd talk a little bit about what was in there today. Some of it is mirrored in what I've already done. so. Often what I've done with these things, I've tried to set goals. So this is a practice book from 2013. Uh, I wanted to learn all of Eric Alexander's licks that he'd given me in the lessons in 12 Keys, prepare for the suite that John Bowen had written from which I did, transcribe Chris Potter's solo on confirmation, play more eighth note phrases, develop compositional techniques in my playing, um, and scales in the upper octave into the altissimo register. But one of the things that amazes me when I go back through these things is how often I've had the best intentions of doing the things and then never quite following them through. One of the things with Michael Brecker is you can certainly, you can see some of the things on the practice sheets and hear them in the recordings. And I will, there is a link, uh, well actually I'll stick it up here to the Brecker vlog I made last year for the advent calendar, but I will today, I'll put together a new Brecker playlist. So make sure you check it out below. But with that in mind, let's have a, a little look, a little blow through uh, some of these exercises that are on even just this one of 800 practice sheets that Brecker put together. <laughs> So the first thing Brecker has on his sheet is two Gary things. Now what he's referring to there is Gary Campbell. Uh, I don't know whether Brecker had the book, I would imagine this was maybe before Gary Campbell had uh, produced the book. Maybe it wasn't, maybe he had got the book, but two things. And what Mike's written down here is a D triad and a C minor. And I've mentioned before in the book on, sorry, in the vlog on Triadic Pairs, the goal of a triadic pair is to take two triads that don't share a note, so D major and C minor, and play those together. So, see there are so many permutations and suddenly you know you could maybe go up the first inversion of D come down the second come down the C you could practice that for hours and hours and hours and hours and then he's got uh, this kind of little phrase so doing that down in minor thirds is a really great exercise or in tritones 
that's a little four note cell he's got and put together loads and loads of stuff around that what else has he got here this is a good one minor two fives in all keys <laughs> Lydian Augmented chords, diatonically, I love the Lydian Augmented scale, I have spoken about it before. Lydian Augmented is a major scale with a raised fourth, raised fourth, raised fourth, raised fifth. If you're doing it in chords. Did I play that first one right? I don't think I did. Michael Bracker thought it was worth practicing, I definitely think it's worth practicing. And there's a study how sharp 11 stuff, which I don't quite know what that is, but here's Brecker, and what I love about Brecker is you can sometimes, you can hear the transition of what that's going on in the practice room, out on the saxophone, but not in a mechanical sort of way. Yes, Mike Brecker plays a lot more lick-based material, and he kind of, what Chris Potter has been to players of my generation, so those guys now in their 30s, I'm still in my 30s. Brecker for the guys in their 40s and the 50s was the guy. I remember one of my teachers, uh, Michael Ford, talking a lot about Mike Brecker and Ben Castle talking to me about how him and Dennis Baptiste, the two, two really good UK bass players, used to kind of trade Brecker licks off against each other when they were both studying in, in music school. So a lot, a lot of stuff there. Um, check out the archive. I've linked it below. It's, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. And if you're near the university, go along, make a video about it. Tell me about it because... Uh, I need to wait till I can cross the pond before I can go there again. Anyway, back to my practice. <laughs> I said it before, there's a great line from Denzel Washington, which is dreams without goals ultimately lead to frustration and disappointment. And I'm desperately, and I'm still working on it, I'm trying to get it right, trying to get some kind of practice plan, a practice journal ready for you guys for 2019. But on the build up to that, I've been thinking about starting a challenge. Now, one of my favorite YouTubers is a guy called Pete McKinnon, who's a photographer, a videographer from Toronto in Canada. And Pete has got, at the moment, he's got what he's calling the PM Grid Challenge, where he's challenging those people who follow him on Instagram and YouTube to take on this photography challenge of turning their Instagram feeds kind of into all sorts of autumnal colors. So one of the things I'm doing, I've got about less than an hour until I need to pick the children up from school today. And I don't have, well I do have lots to do, but I can't stand being stuck in that basement studio when the weather's nice. And I know I need to get a photograph for my Instagram grid because, well, there it is, but I've, I've not been getting any decent ones for my PM grid challenge on. So I'm heading into our uh, next couple of villages near where we live with the camera trying to get a slightly different perspective and some better photos because I think I've taken a picture of everything I can in Whittlesford. So with that in mind, and in light of, let me get me in focus, in light of the practice books idea, I've decided I'm going to start my own challenge. Now it's just going to be a 20 day challenge, but it's going to be exclusively on my Patreon channel, which you can find below. Why on Patreon? Well, it's going to take quite a bit more work than a normal vlog, and Patreon is a great way for you guys, if you're really into what I do, to help support it. And the great thing is, you can be a patron, 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 patron patron of mine for just two dollars per month you can't even buy a cup of coffee a month for two dollars a month so if you think what i'm doing is worth that two dollars a month please head over to patreon and in two weeks time i'm going to start this 20-day challenge i'm going to go through all my practice notebooks which contain exercises that i've done with eric alexander with Bramford marsalis pick up stuff i've picked up off joshua redmond and chris potter and mark turner and all those other guys that i've been very very fortunate to have either lessons, conversations, or just other things with 
maybe even some of the bracket stuff as well because so much of what's in those bracket books I'm already doing myself so I'm going to head over to Patreon it's going to be on there it's going to be an exclusive Patreon you're not going to find it on Cambridge Saxophone you're not going to find it on my YouTube channel I've decided I'm going to give my patrons a real treat so like I say just two pounds a month two dollars a month even which is less than two pounds and you can have all that on there give you an idea of what's going to be on this kind of 25 days I said 25 days or 20 days I can't remember what I said a few hours ago too much teaching going on um, my alto is set up um, one of the things when I was doing that minor two five and it's kind of as something the Brecker wanted to practice is always worth something to practice is a little minor two five lick now got it on alto doesn't really matter what saxophone you're on or even what instrument you're on it always works um, it's a dominant bebop <laughs> But you don't go down to the root. So a dominant bebop will be. But what I want you to do is go to the flat nine or the G, the G sharp in this case on the alto. I've just knocked the reed. These Francois Louis ligatures are great, but they're really bad at holding the reed in place when you knock them in the wrong way. Great on autumn leaves on that minor two five or any kind of minor two five. Really nice lick. Anyway, thank you very much for watching today. Don't forget to check out my last vlog here. This is what I was up to this time last year. Hit the subscribe button, it makes a huge difference. And head over to Patreon if you'd be interested in that. Even if you're not interested in Patreon, I really, really thank you for watching. And uh, don't forget, stay tuned, subscribe, hit the bell. You'll know when my next video's out. Bye bye.